So I will start this story by saying that I have never seen myself as a virtuous individual. In fact, the tale that I am about to unfold is one that involves some regrettable repercussions. However, at its core, it is a story about a nefarious character seeking retribution against another malevolent individual to give you a better understanding of who I am. Let me provide you with some background information. Growing up, my mother raised me as a single parent due to the untimely passing of my father when I was but a young lad. Despite this tragic loss, I was fortunate enough to have a plethora of older brothers who took on the role of male role models in my life. Additionally, my father had thought ahead and left behind a life behind a life insurance policy that enabled me to have a relatively comfortable upbringing. Looking back on my life, I realized that socializing was never my strong suit. And as a teenager, I found solace in the digital realm. This inclination towards spending extensive periods in front of my computer screen only intensified during my college years. It became the norm for me to dedicate a staggering 80 of my time to activities like gaming, work-related tasks, and immersing myself in the vast expanse of literature. That awaited me on the screen. Little did I know this prolonged engagement with technology would have consequences that manifested in my physical appearance as the hours turned into days and days into months. My sedentary lifestyle took a toll on my physical well-being. I found myself grappling with the unwelcome companionship of excess weight as my waistline expanded and my self-perception suffered as a result. By the time I reached the age of 20, I was confronted with the harsh reality of being considered unattractive and grappling with obesity. The consequences of my introverted nature and my preoccupation with screens extended beyond my physical appearance. The lack of socialization and my overwhelming focus on digital activities meant that my, my romantic experiences were severely limited. It wasn't until I crossed paths with my ex fiance that I began to, to explore the realms of dating and intimacy. Raised in a deeply religious household, my upbringing instilled within me a sense of caution when it came to matters of the heart. Following the loss of my father, my mother's fervent religious devotion grew even stronger permeating every aspect of our lives. As a result, the idea of casually dating or playing the field went against the values instilled in me. I embraced the belief that love and relationships should be approached with sincerity and long-term commitment. However, Amid my limited dating experiences, I found solace and a sense of accomplishment in another realm, the world of coding. Despite lacking the confidence to pursue romantic relationships, I, I discovered a passion for programming and worked diligently to, to develop my skills in various coding languages. College provided the perfect platform to expand my knowledge and expertise in this field being completely honest. I must admit that I never considered myself a skilled person or a proficient coder however, armed with a modest amount of coding knowledge and fueled by an abundance of creativity, I discovered a remarkable opportunity to generate residual income streams. Fortunately, I secured a decent job in the IT field that allowed me to work from the comfort of my own home three days a week. At the age of 24, I still carried the burden of being overweight and feeling like a social outcast. But then a fortuitous encounter occurred through my mother's involvement in a Bible study group. It was there that I met a remarkable woman who would later become my ex-fiancé at the age of 36. We instantly connected and embarked on a romantic journey together. At the time, she had a delightful two-year-old son who swiftly became the center of my universe. In fact, they became the sole focus of my life, the only things that truly mattered to me. Despite my previous inclinations to preserve my chastity, I must confess that it didn't take long 
time for our relationship to become physical. All those years of pretending to save myself for the right moment were swiftly cast aside when the opportunity arose. To my surprise, the experience proved to be liberating. Effectively shattering the self-imposed shell that had encased me for far too long. Within a matter of months, thanks to her influence, I found myself blossoming into a more outgoing and sociable individual. Not only did I wholeheartedly embrace my role as a father figure to her son, but our relationship took a significant turn within a mere six months of dating when she discovered that she was pregnant. Given my strong religious beliefs, I promptly proposed to her, driven by the desire to be married before the arrival of our bundle of our bundle of joy. However, she dropped an unexpected bombshell on me. One, that, that would leave me dumbfounded. It turned out that she was still legally married to a man who was currently serving time in prison. Strangely enough, this revelation didn't perturb me as much as one might expect. She had always shared stories about her tumultuous past. I naively believed that I could be the savior she needed to break free from her troubled circumstances. So I merely accepted this unexpected revelation as an inevitable consequence of being with her. Without delay, she initiated the divorce proceedings and we eagerly anticipated tying the knot as soon as the legalities were sorted out as the joyous occasion of the baby's birth approached. I found myself soaring on cloud nine convinced that I had finally secured a meaningful place for myself in the world. Something within me ignited, sparing me to embark on a weight. Lost journey shedding the pounds that had burdened me for far too long. Remarkably, I discovered that I was spending less time immersed in the online world prioritizing my newfound family above all else our relationship seemed harmonious, and I genuinely believed that, that we shared an unbreakable bond, where open communication flowed effortlessly between us. Little did I know how drastically mistaken I was. In retrospect, I can't help but acknowledge the presence of several warning signs that unfortunately, my, my love-struck state blinded me to. It's disheartening to admit, but they were there all along quietly waving their crimson flag while I remained blissfully unaware. Allow me to shed light on a few of these indicators. Firstly, she confessed to me in the early stages of our relationship that her involvement with my church had ulterior motives. It wasn't driven by a genuine spiritual longing or a desire for communal worship. Rather, it stemmed from her recognition that such association could potentially aid her legal circumstances. You see, she was on probation with pending court cases and she, she believed that affiliating herself with my religious community would, would help bolster her case. Regrettably I allowed myself to be swept away by the intensity of my emotions rendering me oblivious to the, the implications of this revelation. Secondly, despite my earning a comfortable six-figure income, through a combination of my primary, job, and various side projects, she insisted on maintaining her part-time employment. This perplexed me as it seemed unnecessary given my financial stability. Consequently, my mother had to step in to lend a helping hand in taking care of the children, as her job commitments limited her availability. In hindsight, this should have raised concerns about her motivations and willingness to contribute to our family's well-being. However, my infatuation clouded my judgment causing me to overlook the significance of this peculiar arrangement. Another aspect that should have prompted deeper scrutiny was the vast number of individuals she seemed to be acquainted with it. It struck me as peculiar that a suburban mother with a secretarial job could boast a staggering 200 contacts in her phone. Such an extensive network of connections seemed implausible and left me questioning the authenticity of her relationships. Yet I brushed off these doubts, preferring to focus on the love and
and happiness we shared rather than delve into intricacies of her social sphere. Furthermore, our plans for marriage repeatedly faced delays ostensibly due to sick relatives or other unforeseen circumstances. Although she did follow through with divorcing her incarcerated husband, it appeared as though there were always convenient reasons that hindered us from officially tying the knot. Looking back, I realize how these postponements allowed for the persistence of a certain ambiguity within our relationship. However, in my starry-eyed state, I accepted each delay without questioning their underlying motivations, choosing to trust her implicitly. Then something happened that shook me out of her spell. She unexpectedly became pregnant for the second time, and this time. It was not just with one precious life, but with twins. It was a staggering revelation. As we had only been together for around four years, and now we were on the brink of welcoming not to but four children into our lives. It was far beyond what I had ever imagined or anticipated. Curiously, she claimed to have been using birth control during that period, which led us to forego the use of condoms. Nevertheless, as we navigated the challenges of parenting, our growing family, the weight of the situation bore heavily on my mind. I began contemplating a permanent solution of vasectomy. Surprisingly, my ex fiance encouraged this decision. Acknowledging the practicality of ensuring our family did not expand further. However, before undergoing the procedure, I decided to explore the possibility of preserving my fertility by freezing some sperm just in case we changed our minds in the future. With that intention in mind, I scheduled a visit to my doctor, seeking guidance on the process and potential options during the the consultation the doctor emerged with a grave expression sharing unsettling news that caught me off guard. It appeared that my sperm count was lovingly low with the majority of them exhibiting limited mobility. This revelation left me in a state of disbelief and concern and contemplating the potential ramifications it could have on our family's future. However, the doctor offered a glimmer of hope suggesting that issue might be temporary and potentially influenced by my overall health and lifestyle choices. It was recommended that I adopt a healthier diet and make other positive changes to my habits for a few weeks. Only then could I return for further evaluation, allowing time to see if any improvements would manifest. This unexpected twist in my reproductive health propelled me into a whirlwind of emotions leaving me grappling with both uncertainty and the daunting task of making the necessary adjustments to improve my chances of conception. After the doctor dropped the bombshell on me that I might be infertile, my mind was in a complete haze. I could not believe what was happening to me. I had always imagined myself having a large family. And now it seemed like that dream was being snatched away from me. Even though I already had three children, the thought of being unable to have more of my own was devastating. As I left the doctor's office, I was in a daze, and my mind was racing with all sorts of thoughts. I didn't even realize that I was walking until it started to get dark outside. Eventually, I had to call an Uber to get home. My fiancé was already asleep when I got home, and I didn't have the heart to tell her what had happened. So I lied to her and told her that my car broke down and I was at the mechanics late the next day. I started researching online trying to find similar stories to mine. I wanted to believe that the doctor was wrong and that I could still have children of my own. I came across a post that talked about how fertility assessments are not always accurate and how I should get a second opinion. I jumped at the chance and scheduled a fertility test as soon as I could. However, when the test results came back, it was confirmed that I was indeed infertile. It was a crushing blow, and I felt like my entire world was falling apart. I couldn't believe that the children I had come to love and care for as my own were not biologically mine. It was like everything I had known and believed about my life 
was suddenly turned upside down. When I couldn't bear the weight of my emotions any longer, I sought solace in the comforting presence of my mother. I went to her house and for the first time in my adult life allowed myself to cry uncontrollably. My mother, in her infinite wisdom, tried to console me by sharing a story that was never meant for my ears. She revealed that I myself was the result of an affair and that my, my biological father tragically passed away from a fatal overdose of, of pain medication when he discovered the truth. Now, I'm not sure why my mom thought this revelation would bring me any comfort but instead, it left me with a distorted perception of women and relationships for some time after sharing this story and allowing myself to calm down. My mother in her own unique way encouraged me to man up and honor my commitment to the children. She emphasized that I was the only father figure they had ever known and urged me to be there for them. Up until this point, I had often been a pushover yielding to the desires and expectations of others. Her words resonated with me and for a brief period of about 24 hours, I seriously contemplated the weight of my responsibility. However, the mounting pressure eventually became too much to bear, and I reached a breaking point. In an attempt to escape the turmoil, I called my fiancé and fabricated a family emergency claiming that I needed to spend the night at my mother's house. She kindly offered to make us dinner, but I declined the gesture. At this point, our twins were around six months old. Our boys were two and a half years old and five years old respectively. I won't deny that I felt some attachment to these children but it, it became increasingly difficult to face them. Every time they innocently uttered the word data, it felt like a, a dagger piercing through my heart. I struggled to maintain composure refusing to reveal the turmoil within me. My mother, perhaps thinking I was manning up, refrained from saying anything silently observing my internal battle. Eventually, I decided to consult an attorney, convinced that I could find a way to remove myself from the birth certificates of these children. I believed that since we were not married, I could discreetly extricate myself from the situation. However, my optimism was short-lived as we delved into the the efficacies of paperwork and financial details, it became apparent that due to my involvement in their lives and the intertwining of our finances, I would likely be held responsible for child support, especially for the boys. Additionally, my ex fiance would be entitled to a share of the house and my side businesses. The lawyers estimated that I could potentially owe around 25 of my income for an extended period of time. Frustrated and disillusioned by the notion of state-enforced obligations I found myself distancing from my lawyers after paying their initial fee, unable to come to terms with the implications of the situation. Consumed by a vengeful rage, I resolved to devise a plan to vanish from their lives, leaving them with as little as possible. The first step in executing my scheme was to obliterate all my my residual income sources and deliberately get myself fired from my job. Causing my own dismissal proved to be relatively simple, albeit somewhat cringe, worthy. I enacted scenes reminiscent of office space venting my frustration by smashing an office printer in the courtyard. While working from home, I hardly did any actual work instead of opting to send memes to my coworkers. I refrained from harming any clients since my boss happened to be a friend, but my office mates certainly had a good laugh at my antics. Once unemployed, I didn't even bother filing for unemployment benefits and began relying on our savings. To maintain the illusion of financial stability, my ex fiance allowed me to handle all the financial matters. Even though both our names were on everything, unbeknownst to her, I meticulously drained our accounts and let the chaos of our finances ensue. I left her checking account with a few thousand dollars while our credit card debt skyrocketed since I ceased 
stopped making payments. Quite amusing. I must admit for months. I contemplated whether I should end it all following in the footsteps of my would. Be father. Ultimately, I chose to forge a different path, mustering the courage to carry on. In an attempt to distance the children from my ex fiance I resorted to getting ancestry test kits for them. I hoped that by discovering their true biological father, I could find a way to free them from her influence. However, the results of the tests only unveiled more bizarre and perplexing truths. It turned out that the oldest child was both a cousin and half brother to their siblings, indicating that the brother of the man in prison must have impregnated my ex fiance. Moreover, the test results didn't reveal any family members that I had anticipated, leaving me puzzled and without any viable options. Thus, my investigation came to an abrupt end. Feeling utterly disgusted by my mother's actions towards my father and her newfound alliance with my ex fiance, I made a conscious decision to distance myself from her as well. I meticulously devised a plan to escape from everything vanishing into the abyss by fabricating an elaborate hiking trip narrative. I played up the idea claiming that I would spend a week alone in the trails of a remote location immersed in deep contemplation before embarking on this journey. I took the then six-year-old child out for ice cream and there for the second time in my adult life, I allowed myself to shed tears. The sight of his dad crying left the child understandably distraught. As he desperately tried to console me, his innocent mind grappling with the complexity of the situation. I wept for the pain of having to leave him expressing my apologies countless times, even though he couldn't fully comprehend the gravity of the circumstances. Losing him was my greatest fear. For I knew he wasn't my biological child yet despite that, that knowledge, I had managed to form a genuine bond with him. After leaving that afternoon, I arrived at the lodge and checked in under my new identity. Now I'll skip over the details of how I managed to establish this new life as I'm uncertain about the legality of my actions. Fast forward six months, and I found myself in a new city successfully rebooting my IT career and gradually working my way back to my previous income level. I couldn't resist the temptation to stalk my ex. Finance say on social media platforms like Facebook. I'll admit it was quite cathartic to witness the chaos they experienced while attempting to access various accounts. It became evident to her that our once comfortable finances were now far from stable. Witnessing her resorting to begging for money on Facebook was, to say the least, quite distasteful. Although I won't delve into the legal aspects, numerous individuals embarked on a search for my whereabouts. At one point, I contemplated contacting the police to inform them that I was safe, but I ultimately decided against it. Unfortunately, this choice later resulted in a substantial fine, but I felt it was a small price to pay. I dedicated a significant amount of time to self-improvement, focusing on my physical well-being and achieving remarkable fitness. I renounced my religious beliefs and embraced a hedonistic lifestyle, becoming an entirely different person, unrecognizable from my former self. For about a year, I continued to stalk my ex-fiancé, observing her life from a distance. It was during this period that I learned she had started dating a new guy and became pregnant almost immediately. Meanwhile, my mother remained intertwined in her life, taking care of my supposed children while I remained oblivious to what was truly happening. Then on the one-year anniversary of my departure, I discovered that she had created a memorial page. For me, this revelation ignited a renewed sense of determination to continue exacting my revenge. I decided to reach out to my brother. Someone with whom I had grown apart over the past decade, but who remained a blood relative and had always been there for me during my younger years. 
I confided in him explaining the reasons behind my actions and we we caught up on each other's lives. However, I requested that he keep my existence a secret for the time being and he agreed to honor my request. It was during this conversation that he informed me about my, my mother and ex-fiancé, filing a lawsuit against my insurance company in an attempt to claim the payout from my life insurance policy. Astonishingly, my ex had somehow managed to maintain the policy's premiums despite their substantial cost. If she emerged victorious, the payout would be substantial, reaching seven figures, and she would also be entitled to the premium she had paid since my alleged demise. Well, let me tell you. I am not the kind of person who would stoop to defrauding an insurance company, but I had my own plans brewing. Determined to confront the upcoming hearing, I embarked on a grueling 1,000-mile journey back to my old city. Along the way, I played Highway to Hell on repeat finding a strange sense of satisfaction in the lyrics. Arriving early at the courthouse, I, I took a seat and observed my surroundings. By this time, I had transformed my appearance with a beard and, and shed 60 pounds so I looked drastically different. To my surprise, both my ex-fiancé and mother passed by without even recognizing me it was clear that my physical transformation had left me unrecognizable. I had initially imagined barging into a grand courtroom ready to unleash a cringe-worthy objection, but instead they headed to a smaller room accompanied by lawyers from the insurance company. In a moment of spontaneity, I decided to throw caution to the wind and knocked on the door repeatedly until they opened it. As they laid eyes on me, a disheveled man with a beard, confusion and engulfed the room. I calmly stated I believe you are trying to settle the issue of whether I am dead. Instantly my ex. I honestly recognized me and let out a gasp, but the lawyers remained baffled. Eventually, everyone spilled out into the hallway and chaos ensued. Bailiffs were summoned as my ex-fiancé screamed and resorted to physical violence necessitating handcuffs to be placed on her. This unexpected turn of events drew the attention of the insurance company's lawyer's boss or client, who promptly arrived on the scene, demanding statements and conducting inquiries. Even a detective was brought in, making me second. Guess my, my impulsive decision to reveal myself. However, when it came time to give my statement, I didn't fabricate anything though I purposely remained vague about my current place of residence. I ended up staying in town for almost a month, residing in a cheap motel and experiencing a whirlwind of events. I shared evidence of my ex-fiancé's infidelity with anyone who showed the slightest interest. I attempted to connect with the children, but the youngest didn't recognize me, and the seven-year-old told me to fuck myself with considering the circumstances was understandable. The police were furious and initiated civil litigation to recover the costs incurred during their search for me. At one point, a detective from another state even flew in to question me. Fortunately, I managed to avoid any arrests as I was careful not to leave behind any fingerprints that could be linked to my new identity. I was ultimately slapped with a hefty fine which I promptly paid in cash much to the surprise of the police. As far as I was concerned, I was done with that town. Not long after, my ex-fiancé served me with a civil lawsuit on multiple counts. And my mother willingly assisted her. However, by then, I had become a leaf in the wind drifting far away from their tumultuous lives. I returned to my new city. Never looking back after a few months of exacting my revenge by by sabotaging her insurance plans. I decided to let go and move forward with my life. This all transpired several years ago, and I can proudly say that I am in a much better place now. However, I must admit that recounting these events has left me feeling drained and I find myself in need of some rest if there is interest. 
I may share what unfolded in my life after all of this. Update. Hey, everyone. I appreciate the curiosity surrounding my, my story, and I thought it would be fitting to provide a brief update on, on where life has taken me. I primarily want to let people know about my journey because it, it seems to pique the interest of many. If any of you have burning question, feel free to ask and I'll try my, my best to answer them in the comments. Now, I won't delve into discussing specifics of how one can disappear as we must refrain from exploring potential illegal activities on this platform. However, if you're intrigued by such matters, I encourage you to look into the case of Jack Baskey, a former Kitch B spy who managed to enter the United States and acquire credentials. In fact, millions of undocumented immigrants follow similar paths to find employment in American companies. Uncle Sam simply wants those taxes paid. As for the insurance investigation and how they searched for me, I'm not entirely sure about the details. Interestingly, I never received so much as a phone call from them prior to our face-to-face -face encounter. I have reached a point where seeking revenge no longer holds any appeal for me. I now firmly believe in the adage that violent delights have violent ends. In my view, my ex fiancé's life is already burdened with difficulties, and any further action on my part would only bring harm to the children. After the fallout with my ex, I left the town and ceased contact with my brother. I even stopped monitoring the situation involving my ex starting over in an unfamiliar city devoid of family and friends has been a lonely and intimidating experience. Yet there is an equal measure of excitement and hope in embracing this new beginning. Now you might wonder how I managed to reset my life upon arriving in the new city. Well, I had a substantial amount of cash that I used to sustain myself in a motel for a few months while I organized my documents and searched for employment. Due to the fear of my home computer being scrutinized in the event of my disappearance. I couldn't meticulously plan everything in advance. It became apparent that without a college degree tied to my name, securing a job in my field of expertise proved challenging. Consequently, I made the bold decision to establish my own company and advertise my skills in creating custom dispatch software, video editing, and presentation design among other tasks. Although I only received a handful of jobs through this endeavor, the earnings barely covered my living expenses. However, after completing multiple projects for the same company, I struck up a friendship with a project manager, which ultimately led to a salaried position. At a reasonable rate presently my income is approximately 70 of what I used to make, but I find contentment in what I have achieved. In conclusion, I want to express gratitude for the interest and support shown throughout my journey. It's been quite a ride, and I am grateful for the opportunity to share a glimpse into my life. Remember, even when faced with challenging circumstances, there is always a chance to rebuild and find happiness once again. I invested a significant amount of time scouring the Internet for individuals who shared similar experiences. And eventually, I became involved with the men going their own way. Jitao Group. Within this community, our discussions predominantly revolved around negative views and derogatory remarks about women. Unfortunately, this constant reinforcement led me down a path of resentment and misogyny regrettably. I even resorted to creating fake accounts to harass women online. It's a topic that I feel embarrassed and remorseful about now. So I'd rather not delve into further details to compensate for the lost time and bitterness I had developed. I joined Tinder and engaged in casual relationships to fill a void throwing money around and deceiving these women became a way of life for me, and I found myself succumbing to infidelity in almost every relationship driven by the misguided belief that they were all doing the same. 
When confronted about my actions, I would feign ignorance, pretending not to understand why they were upset. Until they either left or attempted to forgive me only for me to, to repeat my unfaithful behavior. Looking back, I am far from proud of the person I had become. A couple of years ago, one of the women with whom I had a regular sexual relationship came to me excitedly announcing her pregnancy. In that moment, my immediate response was to accuse her of infidelity and promptly eject her from my apartment. The look of shock on her face lingered as I regarded her as just another promiscuous woman. I proceeded to mock her and even shared the incident with my, my Magtow buddies openly confessing to my unfaithfulness and, and displaying the evidence. Reluctantly, I agreed to a paternity test while she was still pregnant, mainly to avoid legal complications. However, the test results astounded me overwhelmed with emotion. I found myself in tears attempting to embrace her, but she recoiled flinging some papers at me and sternly declaring her desire never to see me again returning home. I drowned my sorrows in alcohol relieved to discover that I would indeed become a father. This time for real, yet deeply saddened by the person I had become. I must reiterate that I do not wish for anyone to sympathize with me, as I am fully aware of my shortcomings, as I am fully aware of my shortcomings as a person. Throughout the remainder of her pregnancy, she refused to engage in any meaningful conversation with me preventing any opportunity for me to explain my I fully understood her stance given the pain I had caused. When the baby, a girl was born, I made my way to the hospital to sign the birth certificate. At the same time, I met with her lawyer who turned out to be her sister to discuss child support matters that we had previously touched upon. In a desperate attempt to mend the situation, I made a last-ditch effort and proposed signing any document they desired if only she would spare 30 minutes to sit down over coffee and allow me to explain myself. She sought full custody and requested substantial financial support. I chose not to hire a lawyer because I genuinely wanted to make amends and I feared that involving legal representation would only create obstacles to safeguard either my finances or me. I sat down with her for that coffee meeting and to my surprise she allowed me to speak without interruption for almost 20 minutes. While I didn't divulge the complete truth about my past, she understood my initial reasons for wanting a paternity test. However, she made it clear that she couldn't excuse my actions of mocking her, throwing her out, and engaging in infidelity. I signed the necessary papers, but I pleaded with her to grant me the opportunity to be a part of our daughter's life and have a relationship with her. She expressed concern about my emotional stability, emphasizing that I needed to undergo intensive therapy before any such arrangement could be considered. Naturally, I agreed to embark on this therapeutic journey. During therapy, I underwent significant personal growth and conducted extensive research on the consequences of cheating and the impact it has on individuals. I discovered that there were countless women who had experienced pain and heartbreak due to infidelity and home-wrecking situations as well. A revelation that seems obvious now. A revelation that seems obvious now. It became glaringly apparent that my perspectives about women were not only toxic, but also damaging. Realizing this, I made the decision to sever ties with my Meg Tower acquaintance as I believed that their environment would hinder my, my progress and perpetuate harmful beliefs. I don't wish to castigate the entire group because I believe that there are individuals within it who are genuinely seeking answers and healing. However, I recognize that continuing to associate with them would, would impede my own personal growth and transformation. Interestingly, becoming the father of a baby girl served as a, a poignant wake-up call, compelling me to reevaluate and abandon my mistreatment of women. After a considerable wait, I was finally granted the opportunity to, to see my daughter when she reached seven months of age. Our visits began as supervised 
sessions taking place every other weekend. Throughout this time, I made sure to fulfill my financial responsibilities by diligently paying child support. Moreover, I made sincere efforts to communicate with my daughter's mother and seek reconciliate with my daughter's mother and seek reconciliation. One fateful night fueled by alcohol, we found ourselves caught up in a moment of passion, which ultimately led to a physical encounter. The following morning, she appeared both embarrassed and conflicted. She asked me to leave, yet there was an underlying suggestion that she might be open to working things out. Gradually, over time, we made the decision to move in together when she lost her job due to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, her family's deep-seated resentment towards me has hindered any progress in our relationship. Their disapproval has prevented discussions of marriage or any long-term commitment in fact. Their animosity was so strong that I even skipped attending our daughter's second birthday celebration as her lawyer sister expressed her disdain for my presence. Despite these challenges, I remain hopeful that our situation will improve. I recognize that I already have more than I deserve. At present, the ongoing pandemic has led to remote work for me, while my partner takes care of our daughter and tends to our household needs. Although she still harbors suspicions towards me, and occasionally checks on me while I'm working in my office. I understand her concerns. For now, my primary focus is to be there for my daughter and make amends with her mother. I continue attending therapy sessions via video calls, striving to be a better person each day. However, there are aspects of my past that I fear I may never be able to fully disclose to anyone, which is why I sought solace in sharing my story with the strangers of Reddit. I apologize to those who may have initially perceived me as a hero in my earlier post. To my fellow readers, I implore you not to allow hatred to consume you. I nearly missed out on a precious opportunity and I realize that there is still a chance for me to lose it all if I am not careful. This will be my final update. Unless in the years to come, I return to share the outcomes of my journey. I wish everyone the best of luck in their own endeavors. Small edit. I stand corrected by a helpful individual who pointed out that the spy I had in mind was Jack Baskey, not Yuri Bezminov. Stop. Most of you are not subscribed. Remember to like it and subscribe if you like the video. Everything helps for the algorithm.